Welcome to Season 8 of the Lighting Your Way podcast. Hi, I'm Betty Long, your host, and this season we are giving the microphone to those who matter most, our patients. Join us as they share their personal journeys, offering candid insights into their experiences, challenge, and triumphs. In the United States, about 3,500 to 4,000 heart transplants are performed annually. Given that around 6.2 million adults in the U.S. have heart failure, only a small fraction, less than 0.1% of the patients with advanced heart conditions undergo a heart transplant each year due to limited donor availability. Heart and kidney transplants are even more rare. Approximately 100 to 150 combined heart-kidney transplants are performed annually. Given that there are around 40,000 total organ transplants each year, this accounts for roughly 0.25% of all transplants. In this episode, we will hear an inspiring story from Leston Hall a patient who had one of those successful heart and kidney transplants. Les is also one of the members of the four heartbeats, four strangers who became friends during their months-long stay waiting for those heart transplants. Les shares his journey from his diagnosis, the testing and the diagnostic workup, and waiting for a donor, to the life-changing surgery and the road to recovery all the while offering hope and resilience. Leston Hall, this is uh, your episode of the Lighting Your Way podcast. Welcome aboard. It's good to have you. Thank you, Betty. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, I am. I appreciate you coming on board. Um, you are or have been, I guess, a patient uh, that we've been supporting in the um, Coastal Fund down in South Jersey for, it looks like, almost three years so that's a that's a long time to be dealing with the healthcare system what what um what was your initial uh i guess exposure to guardian nurses how did you meet us uh it, it started back roughly about uh 2021 uh i was having some issues with, with my heart um did only afib uh i had a couple of ablations uh, different things was taking place, and, and, it, and it just wasn't working. Um, and I even have an episode where uh, they overloaded me with fluids, and I mm-hmm. aspirated, and mm-hmm. I had uh, spent some time, you know, in the hospital at that point, and that's when I was introduced to uh, the guardian nurses. Uh, come out and, um, you know, she and me spoke with me, yeah. and, um, you know, it started from there. Yeah, that's that's usually how we meet people when when they're hospitalized. Um, had you known about the program prior to that? No, I didn't because in, in, in reality, uh, when you when you first come to the hospital, you know you don't know people, uh, you don't know services, and I was a little skeptical. Right. And uh, when a gentleman came in, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, I frowned on him a little bit. Uh, until you really explained everything to me, you know, because you're going through what you're going through, and here's like a a, a stranger coming in. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure I frowned on it a little bit, but once he explained it to me, I said, okay, fine. This is something that, that's going to support me and that's going to really uh, help me along the way. Yeah, and it's it sounds like uh, you, you've had, as, as I said, quite a journey those since that initial meeting. Um what you've been yeah. working most recently uh, with Alicia, so um, she is more of our complex nurse. So, what what's uh, tell me about your recent journey? What what's been going on? In in, in twenty twenty two, uh, I had a horrible bout with COVID. Mm. Spent over three months at Jefferson Hospital. Wow. Um. Uh. You know, Alicia, I, I tell you. Uh, Alicia is awesome. Uh, uh, that, that, that's what I could say. Uh, uh, Alicia has been right there with me through that process, um, you know, with visits to the doctors. And she was on point. She was on point with the doctors, things that 
I might didn't understand or, you know, uh, she made sure she elaborated on it. Uh, yeah. Even when the doctor and the nurses was in there, but even afterwards, she really sat down and she explained things to me, uh, yeah. and that and that was wonderful. But then, but then, in same year, 2022, in December, um, I had an episode with with uh, my heart, the, the fibrillator going off. Oh. I'd be rushed to the hospital, uh, and spear. And they flew me out to Jefferson. Uh, and, and during that process, uh, Alicia was right there. Um, at that point in time, you know, I spent about a month or so in the hospital. And then, you know, finally they came to me and um, gave me some awful news at the time. Absolutely, it was awful. 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 Um, told me I can't leave the hospital until I receive a heart in the kidney wow um from oh. COVID, it had uh my my lungs rebound wonderful but my kidneys and my heart it never did from april to december uh you know plenty of visits was going through a process of I was going to handle things because they knew things was, was taking place with me. Okay. And, um, you know, they came in, like I said, and, and they spoke to me about it. And, you know, hey, you're laying there, and, you know, it's powerful news, something that you don't want to hear. And I, and I could recall going through my moments before day or two there and, and reaching out to Alicia. And if she know how I felt and I was upset, you know, because we had uh, developed a, a good relationship, a nice bond. And uh, I look up, who's coming in the room? <laughs> Alicia. You know, she wanted to make sure that I understood and that she's going to be right there with me through this walk. And I spent seven months wow. living at Jefferson Hospital waiting for a heart and kidney to come available. And wow. I tell you, you know, and I'm, I'm speaking on Alicia, she's one because she's part of the program and, and, and was nothing but awesome. There's nothing else I could say because she was right there then and still to this day. Wow. She's still right here with me. Um, it's a bond that we built. And we're probably going to be like that for the rest of our lives. <laughs> it's just like another part of the family. You know, yeah. she's part of my yeah. family now. Yeah. Um, you know, my wife, uh, my kids know her. <laughs> um, a, a couple of friends that was real close to me during this process, they know her. Um, <laughs> my my mother know her. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit. I'm going to go back a little bit, Betty. Um, during that, that, that process of um, in 2022, when I was in the hospital for that period of time from COVID, I had developed the ulcer on my leg. And I, I, I was going to a wound care. Okay. And, and Alicia, you know, when she was there available, she was right there with me during that process you know, making sure that, you know, that they give me the right treatment. Yeah. You know, so she, she's been there with me this whole time. And I You've had but, a, you know, one yeah. of the things to say about it. That's quite a um, journey for three years. Uh, so you're pretty young to be, how, how old are you now? I'm, uh, I'll be 59 on October the 29th. Oh, Congratulations. Yeah. Almost happy birthday. Yes. <laughs> so yes. when when did you get your heart and, and kidney? When was that transplant completed? My I received my heart on uh June the tenth, twenty twenty three, and I received the kidney on June the eleventh, twenty twenty three. Wow. Congratulations, Les. Uh, That's yes. wonderful. And I'm born wonderful um you know everything just 
lined up the way it's supposed to. Yeah. Um, you know, my my faith in in God and, and you know, trusting, believing in this process um come a long way. A very long way. Um I, I never I never you know, I, I never didn't believe it was gonna take place. Uh of doing this process, Betty, I, I stayed focused. Um I, I think for them seven months, I, I had one episode where I, I think that, you know, I got a little bit out of hand, and uh, that was when when the kidneys are started weakening more and more, and um, they come in and told me that um, I was going to have to go on dialysis. Oh. And that was something that in my life that even speaking with my family, I always say I'd never go on dialysis, uh, that, you know, I live my life. I'm not going to go through that process because my father spent many years oh. on dialysis. Yeah, and I, I was going to ask you. Yeah, yeah I, I seen that. Not, not only that there, you know, his brothers, um, for mm. his brothers, was going through that same process. Wow. But, you know, being right there and you seeing all that, I, yeah. I said, I, I'll never do it. So when that, oh. uh, the coordinator come in and spoke with me about that, I, I lost it for a moment. And I think it was the delivery. Because the next morning, when uh, the nephrologist come in, he sat down on my bed and he explained everything to me. Then it made more sense to me and I understood it much better. And I spent actually three times getting dialysis, one hour at a time. Okay. And that's all I needed. Uh, so before you got your kidney. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that initial, you know, shock took me off a little bit, you know, uh, <laughs> but I was able to regroup and and went on with the process, and you know, a week or two later, you look up, they come in that morning, in the world, Mister Holly, have a match for your heart and your kidney, wow. and could do nothing. But Shed tears and put my hands in the air and thank God. Wow, it was it was it was good. it was great. I, and from that process, you know, everything like I say, it kicked right in. Uh, you know, like it was supposed to do, and and not only that, there the you know three days later, uh, you know, I didn't came through. I'm I, you know I'm fifty percent of myself, you know. And, and, and you look up, and they, they come in, and they're taking, you know, different things off of you. And, and in my mind, I'm like, whoa, this just took place. You're supposed to come off already? But uh, <laughs> now they say, yeah, you're doing, you're doing fine. Everything kicked right in. So that that was wonderful. That was really wow. wonderful. So what, what was it like spending seven months in the hospital? I, I can't imagine. That's a long time. Betty, faith. It wasn't the easiest process in the world. Not at all. It, it was rough. But you had to keep trusting and believing. And and that was a major part of it. Um I connected with three under four three other wonderful patients. Oh. We called ourselves the Four Heartbeats. <laughs> we was on the floor together. We uh, we walked together. We went up to the game rooms together and played we and different things. And I and I tell you something, buddy. We created a carnival right on our floor. We did uh, basketball, ring toss, soccer. Uh, different type of hoop games, 
just to keep ourselves active. Yeah. And I yeah. and I, I, I have to call their names. Rosie, Dennis, and Dan. And Les, the four heartbeats. The four heartbeats. And you know what's really good about it? Still to this day, we're still connected. Uh, we have been up to groups together. Uh, even when we go up and, you know, we might line up and still have our visits at the same time. We'll go back to the hospital, uh, visit the nurses. Um, it was an opportunity to speak with somebody who's going through the process that we didn't went through. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll speak with them. Uh, and that's what got me through them seven months living in that hospital because it was rough at times. I Uh, bet. But my faith, my faith and trust and believing, that was a major part of it. And and support. You know, you you, you have to have support. Just going through this here process of any transplant, you have to have support. Uh, My family... Wow, man. Awesome. You know, awesome. Uh, was right there uh, the whole way. You know, I, I can speak about my wife, my sister. You know, I can say awesome things about them. But, but there's three people that I, I just want to say a couple of things about right fast, Betty. My brother, Leroy. He's my oldest brother. And for a period of time there where uh, he was able to come and stay with me, he would stay with me weeks at a time because I had a problem with anxiety. Okay. He had no problem. He would be right there with me, taking care of things, sometimes things I may not hear from the doctors, you know, because they're coming in four or five at a time. Right. He was right there to catch it. Um, he was He was awesome. I, I have another cousin named Tyrone. He uh, worked up in Philly Construction. Yeah. He would come by uh, when it was check on me. If I needed <laughs> something to eat, if I needed something done, <laughs> even if he came there, he would run back out and, um, you know, give me something to eat or whatever I need. Yeah. And I could, I could recall a time when I, I guess I caught him kind of late. Because he still lived in Jersey, and he had came over the bridge. Yeah. And you know what? He turned back around. Uh. And still came and brought me something to eat. That's the type of support that you really need. That's, that's very and I, cool. And I had to speak on my daughter, Shales. The sacrifices she made. She's a young lady. But on the weekends... Well, you know, sometimes she hang out with her little girlfriends and go places and different things. No, she was up there with her daddy oh. on the weekend, making sure I was okay and supporting. Um, you know, awesome young lady. That's my baby. <laughs> um, she, you know, she she made some sacrifices to make sure dad was okay. Uh, and and I, I appreciate everybody. You know, a lot of friends that was right there all the time. It was like they were on the schedules. When, when you know, someone couldn't make it, they made sure that, you know, they were right there uh, all the time. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful for each and every one of them. Um, but you need that support. That That's where, you know, it, it keeps you, your spirits up. And, and you, you know, you always need somebody there. That's that's very important when you're in the hospital. That yeah, yeah, someone be right there with you. Not no, because one thing you're not going to understand, and you may not catch everything that's said. Oh sure, there's a lot so coming at you. Around. You know, there's a lot coming at you. Yeah, you know, yeah someone being around you is, is very important for anyone uh, being in the hospital. Yes. My heart doctor, Dr. B, awesome. And I, I, 
and and I, I mean that in the utmost way I can say it. Awesome. And and I, I just want to speak on this here with him. Uh, during that early part of twenty twenty two, when they had the COVID and everything, and you know, like I said, I already was dealing with heart issues. So they had gave me a workup at Jefferson Hospital, and they they didn't think I was strong enough. So I ended up strong, going to another strong, hospital. Less strong enough for a, a what for a transplant? Yeah, for a heart transplant. Yes. Okay. Okay. They didn't think I was strong enough for a heart transplant. You know, they take you through the process and work you up and everything. So they didn't think I was strong enough. I would make it through it. So at that time. Uh, I got transferred to another hospital. We was doing the work up. So during this time, you know, I end up going home and everything, you know, and just going through the process through home and everything. And that's when I had to ever show back in December, end up going back to Jefferson. And during that process, Dr. B come to me. He told me, he said, Mr. Hall, we want to do it here. We want to do the work up again. Okay, great, doctor. Great. And went through that process and with the four heartbeats and <laughs> us connecting and doing the walking and doing the different things, yeah. it, it strengthened me. It really strengthened me up a whole lot. So when they took me through that process uh, of seeing was I strong enough, I knocked it out, Betty. Ah, and so they come and tell me, difference. we're going to do it. We're going to do it here at Jefferson. I said, yes, because that's where I wanted to be anyway. And doing that process, it shows that's where it was supposed to be done at. Yeah. Well, so Dr. The, B, that's awesome. He's your guy. So when you think about yeah. like all of the things that you've been, and you've, you've alluded to some of them as you've been talking, but, but what do you think the, the most frustrating if you've, if at all, that you've had a challenge of being a patient, was the time that you had to wait? What, what do you think it, the most frustrating challenge was for you? At the time, and at one point of time, you know, I couldn't go outside. No. Oh. So, we'd be stuck in that hospital from January. I mean, from December to March, and not able to go outside. Right. I think that was one of the hardest things in the world. But one morning, um, I spoke with the doctors, and I just told them, I have to get outside. <laughs> I don't care, just for a couple of moments. Yeah. I have to get some fresh air in me. You know, you're, you're yeah. in that little box, yeah. and I had to get some uh, fresh air in me. And um, the doctor said, we're going to make it happen. And uh, I was on the third floor. I had, had an awesome charge nurse, Mike. Mike uh, would make sure Mr. Hall would go to, get outside. <laughs> yes, he did. And, and we, had, we had a lot of fun with it, too, Betty, because we, when we come through the hallway bundled up and everything, uh, he always made sure we had some type of theme music. <laughs> and when we would come back in, we always would play Rocky. Oh, uh, I was going to say, you, know, you were probably cool. playing the Rocky theme. <laughs> yes, it was Rocky. And, and like I said, I had built up a lot of strength. And, you know, I'm in the chair, I'm bundled up. You know, we take the covers off a little bit. And, you know, I'm, I'm rocking to the music, you know. It, it was great. <laughs> and, it, it, and it did a lot on that on the floor for other patients to see that. Yeah, it was encouraging for yeah. them also, you know. So it it it, it was really um, that point was really great. But if anything, I would say to take away, you know, yes, the time it was something, but yeah. not being to go outside, yeah. um, you know, that was. The hardest thing, because like I, I keep speaking on faith, because that was the, the major part of it that keep you stable, and that part 
keeps you going. And 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 that's where you know, uh, you know, I, I drew all my strength from of just so, continuing to trust and believe. Uh huh. So so you, uh, I'm sorry, you you had your transplant June 2023, right? So how yes. are you feeling now? That's uh, that's you know a year. How are you feeling? How are things going? It's so good. Um, I'm getting back to doing some things I, I couldn't do for a long period of time. You know, uh, not rushing, not rushing or nothing, uh, but gradually uh, uh, doing different things that, you know, I might have couldn't do before for a couple of years there. Um, but I, I really feel great. Um, you know, everything with, with my appointments and different times I go, um, it's been, been great. Uh, when when you first uh, after you get your, the transplant, each month you get um, a biopsy, and my biopsies was awesome from June to December, and from that point on, because of the levels and everything, I haven't had another one since then. Oh, great! Um, this is no need. Right. So that that's that's been wonderful. Uh, you you go like I say every month. Now I'm I'm at every six months. Oh, wonderful! Uh, going back uh, to my my visits and, and different things. So everything's been going along really great. Wow! Are you, uh, and you said you were involved with talking to patients. Is it just at Jefferson, or are you involved with the um, Gift of Life program? But now I'm involved with the uh, Gift of Life program also. Okay. Um, I haven't done no speaking with them yet, but, you know, we've done uh, with the Four Heart Beach. We did the walk back in um, April. Okay. Uh, we have another one that's coming up uh, November <laughs> the 2nd. Okay. Um, and, so and do you do to, it together? Do, do the four of you do it together? Yes. That's great. Yes, we do it together. Uh, like I said, we're we're still connected. Um, we just did a um, event on uh, ABC uh, about the four heartbeats. There's a segment that uh, they did on ABC a couple weeks back. Oh, great! Uh, You're a star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was at Jefferson Hospital, and they in the you know. ABC came in, okay, and they, you know, took us through the process. It's, it's a nice, it's really a nice um, segment that they did uh, of speaking on us, you know, as the four heartbeats and going through the process of uh, heart and kidney transplant, um, you know, and the, you know, help bring awareness, right, at the same time that you know. It, it could be done, and, and on top of it, you know, it's great life afterwards. Yeah. Les, did did yeah. your other friend, did your three friends get a heart and a kidney? Also, were they all? Were you all the same type of transplant patients? No, Rose received a heart, and Dan received a heart. Me and Dennis received heart and kidneys. Wow, that's wonderful. That they're all four of you are doing yeah. well. That's great. Yeah, and they, they, they're they're doing great. Also, you know, we speak uh, all the time. You know, That's a couple great. times a a <laughs> week. You know, we're, we're texting, you know, back and forth all the time, making sure we're checking on each other. Um, you know, at the same time, if, if someone's having a little issue, we make sure that you know we let the other one know. Uh, so if that comes upon us. We you know you know what to do, right. or you know the. If you need to contact the coordinator or the, the you know doctor's office right away or something like that, so we you know like I said we're still right there with each other. That's great. That's great. So so it sounds like you've had a really positive experience, but I, I know that there certainly are patients who may not, you know, who may be struggling or who may be still waiting for the for the organ that they're waiting for. So what what would you like to say to those folks if they're listening? Uh, for one, listen to the doctors and the nurses. They they know what they're doing. They know what they're saying. 
and as much as you can, uh, get up out of that bed. Walk as much as you can. I don't care if it's only from your bed to the door. That's a start because there's movement. Uh, you know, you can't just lay in that bed the whole time and think it's going to happen. Um, right. Like I say, small steps. Right. Um, and hope that, you know, you're connected with some family or some friends, someone that, you know, could be there and, and, and have some support. Yeah. I think that's major, very important. Um, okay. Have some support right there, but you, that, that'll carry you a long way. Sounds but, like uh, it, I, I just it sounds like it helped you guys immensely, all of you. Oh, yeah, it did. It did. And if you connect with, you know, whether you're in the hospital or, you know, home waiting, you know, to be able to connect with other patients that's uh, waiting for the same thing. Yeah. Because it's encouraging. You always encourage each other. And and that's what, you know, the four heartbeats do. We encourage each other all the time. Even at times when, you know, you, you might even want to go walking. But because one of them came, you figure uh-huh. in your mind, well, maybe they want to do it and they want your support. So you'll go ahead and go and take the walk. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, all right. So. So I appreciate that, that you want to encourage patients, right? That's great. So, so, and it sounds like you had some really good nurses and doctors at Jefferson taking care of you, but um, what, what would you say is, as kind of a, a, a parting, uh, a parting shot to uh, the doctors and nurses, not to thank them, but to encourage them to do better. What, what would you like to say to the doctors and nurses? Uh, I would just say, you know, Dr. B, uh, Teresa, and Olivia, coordinators, you know, keep doing what you're doing because you're all a fabulous job. Yeah. Uh, the coordinators, you, you, you work tirelessly with the families, with the patients, uh, for the nurses. You know, I, personally, I stand by Jefferson. Yeah. Sure. Uh, it sounds like you had a great experience. I wonderful. I have wonderful nurses. Uh, I could complain about none of them. Um, well, know, even if you could, I doing. wouldn't let you. I got that nurse coming out. <laughs> no complaint. <laughs> no, but no, they, it, it, uh, it, it really was it was awesome. Um, that's wonderful. All the way around. All the way I'm around. So I'm really so glad. I mean, look, w- folks that are working in transplant are really mission driven, right? It's really such a critical, um, well, it's a gift, right? It's a gift of life, as they said. So, yeah. so the folks that work in transplant are really mission driven. And I'm sure you and the other three heartbeats were quite the, uh, encouragement to them to have, you guys do so well in your in re, in your recovery and continuing to do so well and and to do so much good for others right so thank you for for doing that yes. Wes. i'm i'm glad that you're feeling better and and uh doing some new things yes. is there anything that you'd like to say that i haven't asked no you know i will say this here uh betty you know like i said when we go up for visits or we go up there to the a group, we go back on the floors, and the nurses are so appreciative because they never see that side. Yeah. You know, we're there, we leave, and, and they don't see the other side of the results once we've fully recovered. True. So they'd be so appreciative of us coming back on the floor and visiting them. You know, we sit there, we take pictures, we talk. <laughs> uh you know, really have a, a nice time. And that's that, encouraging to them also. Absolutely. You know, on that. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, 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 Good that, point. You know, yeah, that, that, was, that was, you know, great. That's a good point. I, I'm sure it does their heart good <laughs> to see you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, 
Les, thanks so much for for having the conversation. I am so grateful that you're doing well. Um, congratulations. Yes. Thank you for joining us this week. You can find the Lighting Your Way podcast on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher. If you found our conversation helpful, please share it with your friends and leave us a review. You can learn all about how Guardian Nurses helps patients and their families when they need it most at our website, guardiannurses.com. So until next time, find some joy in your life and pet all the good doggies and kitties. And remember to tell your people that you love them.